Welcome to the next video in the SQLite series. In this video, I'm going to talk about SQLite check constraints. Um, many time when you're designing a database, you design, you know, a, a table with fields like name, and you'll call, you'll say it's a string, or um, you'll have a, an age, and it's an integer. And the problem with this is that names aren't actually strings. You or, or or, you know, integers. You don't really want an integer. For example, if you're gathering names, you probably want a, an integer that's between, say, 0 and 120. Um, and you can either put those constraints in your code or you can put them in the database. It's actually safer to put constraints in the database because that really is part of your domain model. I'll, uh, I'll start with a simple example. So I'll first open up an SQLite 3 database. Okay, and then I'll create a table for ages. So, for example, I'll create, create, oops, hang on a second, uh, one, two, three, copy and paste. There we go. Create a table age tab. It, I just called it nub, and it's an integer, and I want to check that nub is less than 10 and greater than 5. So let's try inserting some values. Paste. Oh, one failed because again one is not greater than five. Let's try five. Five fails as well. Six passes. Um, nine passes. Ten. It fails. And if you actually dump the table you see that only legal values got into this table. I'll create another example now. This time it's a, a colors table. And uh, in this table, hang on a second, I create a color and you've got a name field, which is just a string, but I only want this, the name field of name of these colors to take the values red, green, or yellow. So let's see what happens now. Um, okay, so I go uh, insert uh, into color tabs. So I'm just co I'm copying a. Hang on a second. Paste. So insert into color tabs. Oops. There we go. Insert into color tabs values red. Okay, so red got in. Oops. Let's try green. Uh, green gets in too. Of course. Yellow gets in. Let's try capital. Oh, that didn't work. Um, because there's a capital Y. Let's try fuchsia. Because I don't know how to spell fuchsia. Um, and you'll notice that fuchsia didn't get in, again, because the name of the color isn't quite fuchsia. Okay, now let's see what else you can do. Um, you can also put another constraint or other constraints on a table and copy and paste. Oops, before I do that. I've created a new table called scores where you're gathering scores in a row and you're just gathering A and B. They're both integers. You want to check that A plus B is less than 100. Oops. <laughs> Somehow that table already got in. Hmm. Let's try that again. Okay. So create table scores tab. There we go. <coughs> um, so if I go insert into scores tab values 1 1 it works because 1 plus 1 is 2 which is less than 100 if I tried 99 and 1 fails if I try uh, 1 sorry uh, 99 here and 1 here fails again uh, if I try 99 and 0 it passes if I try and uh, 97 it passes 
and if I dump the table, you'll see that starting here, starting in the right down here, um, you'll notice only the data that meets the constraint gets into the table. You can also put multiple conditions on multiple fields into one check constraint. So for example, you can create a table. I just called it multi-check tab, where a is an integer, b is a string. Uh, you want to check that a is less than 10 and b is like aaa. Uh, with the percentage sign. Percentage AAA, all that means is you can have any string to the left plus AAA at the end. It has to be capital. So if I insert into multi check tab values 1 AAA, it's going to work. If I try 11 in AAA, it's going to fail again because 11 is not less than 10. If I try BBB, of course, it's going to fail. If I try 1, whoops, 1 and BBB, it also fails. If I try 4 and BBAAA, it passes again because BB, this, this string ends with AAA. So if I again dump the table, you'll see that it meets the constraint. The nice thing about using check constraints is that it keeps your data constrained. Uh, it has two useful properties. One is that it pushes the data validation code out of your software base and into your database where it actually belongs because these tables are part of your domain model. That reduces your overall code volume. The other thing is um, and, and by pushing into the database, you can also test it much more easily. The other thing it does is if your data drives any of the behavior in your program, and you, you can feel safe that if even if somebody goes in and tries to put a, you know, a rogue value like fuchsia for the colors, um, it's not going to cause things like exceptions or null pointer errors in your code base. So those are all the values of, those are the values of using check constraints on your data. And this video showed you how to use check constraints in an SQL Lite database. Whoops.